Good morning guys. What I'm going to do today is talk to you about the advanced patrolling technique of satellite patrolling. And just before I even go into that, it's important to say that these, these videos that I'm doing right now are designed to complement and bring to life the tactical manual Small Unit Tactics which I published. Um, that's available on Amazon, the link is in the description below. So these are designed to complement that. I will also say, however, that if you, for example, I'm going to talk about satellite patrolling today, just by reading it in the book and just by uh, watching these uh, YouTube videos, instructional videos, you are not going to be able to accomplish it. Just if you have the idea in your mind. You're going to have to get out there with a team of people, motivated people, and preferably get some professional training and actually practice this so you can get it right. That's why I'm calling it an advanced patrolling technique. Okay. So satellite patrolling itself, what this is, it's a technique that's been used by the, the British Army for a, a long time and what it does is it, it patrols in three manoeuvre elements. So previously in the last couple of talks I've been talking about a squad of nine, so two teams of four and a squad leader. So what this was generally done was you'd split a platoon in half and the platoon commander would take um, one half of the platoon and the platoon sergeant would take the other half of the platoon. And that would be 12 men and so there'd be three teams of four and the, platoon, and the patrol leader would be in one of those teams and that would be the primary team. And there's lots of reasons uh, for this three element um, patrol which gives you, it gives you flexibility of reaction to contact it also gives you a certain element of deception and um, what it also does is it brings down the assault cycle which is usually something at kind of three squad platoon level or three platoon company level and it brings the assault cycle down to uh, half platoon level those three teams of four um, which is something you can't do with a two team squad. Even though you have to bear in mind that as a as a, a, a three a three team patrol, it's still limited in terms of what enemy you you can take on, and that's why that twelve man element is is very useful for a, a, a counterinsurgency situation. Um, and what has happened is as things um, kind of escalated over the GWAT. What you, what you you saw was obviously people would apply, attack the problem in different ways, but you saw, for example, uh, three six-man teams going out, or then you even saw as much as in, in the in the um, the green zone in Hellmand, you'd see whole company patrols going out, and that's a, a platoon, a platoon, a platoon, and then an additional company headquarters, and that's obviously in in a much more high-intensity situation. So satellite patrolling has a lot of uses. Ideally, you'd actually have a, a, a 16 man uh, patrol because you could have the, the team leader could be in his own separate team, the patrol leader, and then he could also have some additional assets there that he could use to influence the battle, say a machine gun team or a designated marksman team, a medic, whatever, something in that team where he still has those three maneuver elements. The assault cycle. What that means is, is that you have the option of rotating teams through different roles in the assault cycle. So you've got um, the, actually uh, as an assault team, you've got a support by fire team, and then you've got reserve if you need a reserve. Or you can mix that up and have two support by fire teams and then an assault team, etc. But that's the, th that's the assault cycle, and that's covered in the tactical manual, and I've and I haven't really been able to touch upon that in the squad attacks, the squad hasty attack talks I've been doing so far, because you've really only got two maneuver elements. So you've got a support by fire element and you've got an assault element. And there's no additional ability to have a reserve. So traditionally, so what what the what the, the satellite patrol would do is they would patrol in in a sort of a roughly triangular formation, and that depends on the ground. And there's a couple of different ways of doing it. You could have um, the primary team up front and then you can have a satellite team and a satellite team or you can have satellite team satellite team and then primary team at the back here so you're moving in a roughly triangular 
formation. What would then happen is that if you um, reached a task, for example, a patrol task that you had to conduct, then one of the teams ideally would move on to some high ground and that would be very similar to the, to the bounding overwatch previous talk that I did. So they're now in an overwatch position. So now you've got a team in overwatch while the other two teams are conducting whatever tasks they need to conduct. Now, depending on the nature of the enemy that you're dealing with, they're either going to know because of historical you know, situation that you tend to patrol in three-man teams, or they won't know, and they'll just see one or two teams moving. Now, if usually an enemy that wants to attack you wants to survive and get away, and if they know that they are, um, that you tend to patrol in three-man teams, what you've got there, sorry, not three-man teams, in three, three elements, what you've got there is an element where if they're watching and they've got something set up, but they can't identify all the various teams, then they probably won't press the tit, okay? Whether it's an IED, a snipe, a multi-weapon shoot, because they don't know that, unless they can get eyes on, one, two, three, we've got them, they don't know if one of those teams is behind them. And that's where their egress route is. And that's another thing to consider with these drills, is that, is that if you actually want to kill or capture these guys, you're going to have to try and fix them in place, because they're going to try and hit you, and then they're going to go. And so you can often get up onto a firing point and, hey, the best you might have is a blood trail. So that's definitely an issue. Uh, and that's also to do with moving fast, you've got to be able to move fast, etc. to get up. We used to call it go hard and fast into depth. The other aspect of that is if they don't know that you're patrolling in three in three teams, then if they hit one of your teams, then you have the ability to then maneuver the other teams and hopefully get up on their flank, and then that's them in trouble. So this is one of the, the great ideas about satellite patrolling. You've got this great triangular formation that is um, uh, provides its own element of security, um, and then gives you flexibility whether whether you come under contact and you want to break contact and it allows you to move teams up to support that or you come under contact and you want to maneuver on the enemy gives you a great amount of flexibility there, there are some uh, very practical aspects of how to move this formation because you're going to be moving on patrol presence patrol type situation um, which doesn't mean you always want to be overt. But you want, you're going to want to be out there, and you're going to be moving by day, you're going to be moving by night. And so what that means is there's going to be usually a route trace, which the primary team is, is, going, to, is going to follow. So this is in the, in the patrol order. So we're going, to, we're going to follow this route trace, and we've got task here, we've got task here, we've got task here, etc. And through practice and through you know, mutual trust and understanding, the satellite teams are basically going to move they don't want to be too far away because you don't want to be outside of the bubble. You want to be moving in this bubble where you can actually support each other with your own integral uh, weapons. Um, so, you know, you might be 100 meters apart. You may be 300 meters apart. That's probably a little bit too much. Okay. You want to be moving in a kind of a bubble. And as you move in that bubble, then they need to be, they're not going to be able to see you all the time. So they need to know what the rough patrol pace is and they need to be sort of keeping rough formation as you move and this is not a necessarily an easy thing to do without practice. Now what you can do with that is you can have phase lines or report lines and as you move you can report that in and they'll know where you are, they're going to need to speed up, they're going to need to slow down. The other thing you need to plan for is is loss of comms on a patrol or you're not using comms and one way to do that is to, um, if, if they move to get to a point where they lose sight of you you know, they can't see you like 200 yards away, whatever it is, and then you're just moving, whatever. And every so often on this patrol, then you can have uh, rally points where you move in, everybody comes in, rally at the rally point, reset, eat lunch, whatever you're going to do, and then move on again. And that's basically consolidated the satellite team together. One of the things I also talk about in the tactical manual is sequencing. And I talk about specifically sequencing as part of an assault, etc. And... Although, you know, satellite patrolling, if it's a small patrol of 12, is limited stuff to what you can do, 
Um, I, and I really, when I talked about sequencing, I was talking about, hey, we're actually, you know, we're running a platoon attack here and we are, you know, sequencing squads into buildings or whatever. I talked about that, but um, you also need to consider sequencing when you're dealing with your any kind of reaction to contact drills or immediate action drills that you might apply as a satellite patrol. So what, what you'll have is as you move in this roughly triangular formation, then you, which doesn't have to be triangular all the time, you can bring it in single file, whatever you're going to do, however you want to move it, bring it in, bring it out, etc. But when something happens to one of those teams and they come under effective enemy fire, then you're going to need to in a similar way I talked about the combat estimate for the squad leader, you're going to have to consider how to respond to that and how best to spatially sequence the um, remaining two teams who are going to obviously of their own volition start to move up uh, into, into the best positions they can move up into and then they're either going to be able to support a break contact or they're going to be able to support some kind of assault. Uh, up onto up onto the enemy. So a lot of that's to do with sequencing and thinking logically as a patrol leader. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to and it, I, it's a big topic satellite patrolling, which is why I call it advanced technique. I've given you a little introduction. What I'm going to show on the ta sand table models. I'm firstly just going to show you a rough idea of what a satellite patrol looks like. One up, two back, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a scenario. Uh, of where the, the the team, the patrol, comes under contact. And in this case, what they'll do is they'll maneuver. And then in this case, what they'll do is rather than breaking contact, for example, what they'll do is they'll send a team to assault. So we'll, we'll end up with two teams in support by fire. And then a, 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 th a third team is going to maneuver using the, the, the best ground they've got and maneuver up onto the left flank and conduct an assault, just like we've been doing in the squad hasty attack. So it's kind of a squad hasty attack, but you've got those three elements to, to work with. Let's go look at the sand table. Okay, what we've got here is a simple illustration of a satellite patrol moving in a one-up, two-back formation, best as I can do it scale to the model I've got here. So this is the primary team right here, moving front and center. Rear left team over here, moving across a piece of high ground, and rear right team over here. Obviously, um, this is basically the Sahara Desert out here on the sand table. So there's no vegetation, there's just a little bit of terrain. But they will obviously use the best bits of terrain that they can and adapt this formation as they move. And this is the rough triangle that I was talking about, mutually supporting. Okay, so looking at a quick scenario, we've got the terrain model set up again today. So we've got a, a creek running down the center, creek, 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 just to give it a little bit of terrain. We've got a small embankment along here, a little bit of high ground over here, where there are three enemy who are waiting to ambush our patrol as it moves. From this bit of high ground here, we've actually put down a team here who are basically in overwatch as the satellite patrol emerges around the shoulder of this hill and it's going to patrol up this piece of ground moving up that way. As these guys move out, there's a team behind them that's going to follow out behind and then these guys will just peel into place as, as the whole patrol starts to move away. And then we'll have a one up, two back formation. Okay guys, there we have it. Simple drill, 
So in that circumstance, we were attacked from the left flank. The point team and the left hand team ended up as support by fire. And what was the right hand team ended up going left flanking and assaulting onto the enemy position. I was trying to show you that the enemy were trying to uh, escape but didn't make it. And that's one of the issues with that kind of situation. You have to try your best to make sure the enemy don't get away. I apologize for the birds. There seems to be some kind of small unit tactics bird fight going on in the trees above me. So hopefully it doesn't make too much of an impact on the video. I'll probably do a couple more of these uh, satellite things, uh, satellite patrol videos where I, uh, you know, show you different scenarios, etc. Uh, because it's an interesting topic. Thanks very much.